Welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, we are so excited that you decided to worship online with us. Please listen to our upcoming announcements. Our weekly Bible study small groups have been amazing, but one thing we're missing is you. If you haven't joined a small group yet, there's still time. All you have to do is send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and request more information. Are you a young adult between the ages of 21 and 40? If so, send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org with your contact information to receive news on all of the upcoming youth adult events. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media outlets. We can be found on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. Please follow us on our Facebook page at Kingdom Worship Center. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Calling all essential worshipers for our KWC outdoor service. This service will be held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays at 8.30 a.m. 9160 Red Branch Road in Columbia, Maryland. Make sure you bring your lawn chair, your mask, and your heart to worship. Please join us every first Sunday on Bishop Greg's Facebook page for our live communion. Our online communion will convene immediately after our Sunday worship at kwc.online.church. Join Pastor Tanya and the Women's Ministry Council for a virtual beach party on Saturday, August 1st at 2 p.m. Please RSVP by July 26th by sending an email to womenscouncil at kingdomworshipcenter.org.
Hello, my name is Olivia Mitchell, and I am a graduate from City Neighbors High School. This fall, I plan to attend Towson University and major in business administration. I want to thank my family and my friends for their support, and I want to thank Kingdom Worship Center for their opportunity. I also want to send a special thanks to Elder Lenore Taylor for helping me every step of the way. I am blessed to have been given this opportunity, and I am excited to start my journey as a college student. Hello, my name is Bryn Evans, and I just graduated from McDonald's School and will be attending Wake Forest University this fall to study international business and art history. I want to thank the church for the scholarship and my family for the support, and I'm excited for the next four years. Hi, my name is Kaylin Mitchell, and I graduated from Western High School. I plan to attend CCP. I want to extend a thank you to my family, Kingdom Worship Center, and Elder Lenore Taylor for helping me. I, most importantly, I want to extend a thank you to God for giving me this opportunity. set aside specifically for the members of Kingdom Worship Center. If you are interested in having this with you so that you can lay hands on the sick so they'll be, be covered and so that you can use it for yourself, please email us at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Our weekly Bible study small groups have been amazing, but one thing we're missing is you. If you haven't joined a small group yet, there's still time. All you have to do is send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and request more information. Are you a young adult between the ages of 21 and 40? If so, send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org with your contact information to receive news on all of the upcoming youth adult events. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media outlets. We can be found on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. Please follow us on our Facebook page at Kingdom Worship Center. 
You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Calling all essential worshipers for our KWC outdoor service. This service will be held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays at 8.30 a.m. 9160 Red Branch Road in Columbia, Maryland. Make sure you bring your lawn chair, your mask, and your heart to worship. Please join us every first Sunday on Bishop Greg's Facebook page for our live communion. Our online communion will convene immediately after our Sunday worship at kwc.online.church. Join Pastor Tanya and the Women's Ministry Council for a virtual beach party on Saturday, August 1st at 2 p.m. Please RSVP by July 26 by sending an email to Women's Council at KingdomWorshipCenter.org. Oh, 
being a keeper. We thank you for being a sustainer. We thank you for being our pillar. We thank you for being our banner. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. We God, we bless you. Even when we're confused, we bless you. Even when we don't understand, we bless you. Hallelujah. 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 We depend on your strength. We depend on your strength. We depend on your strength. We depend on your strength, God. We depend on your strength. We depend on your strength. We rely on your strength. You are our rock. You are our rock. You are our rock. You are our rock. God, we look to the hills. For the come of our help. And we know our help comes from you. So God, we give you name the glory. We give you name the glory. Thank you for being our rock.
me You lift me up You lift me yeah. up You share the fullness of In the yes, fullness Lord. Hallelujah. of your name In the power of your name In the power yeah. of your name Yes, you keep lifting me up You keep lifting me You lift me up
strength. You are. You are my strength. Woo! It reaches to me. Yes, it reaches to me. Yeah. Yes, it reaches to the highest mountain. Yeah. And it flows to the lowest valley. Yeah. The blood, the blood that gives me strength.
Yes, all fear is gone Because I know He holds my future And life is worth the living just
He's a firm foundation. He's a firm foundation. He's a firm foundation. He's a firm foundation. Hey, he's a firm foundation. He's a firm foundation. He's a firm foundation. He's a solid rock. Yes, he's a solid rock. Yes, he's a solid rock. Yes, he's a solid rock. There's no moving him around. Yes, he's a solid rock. Yes, he's a solid rock. Yes, he's a solid rock. You're my firm foundation. 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 Good morning, Kingdom Worship Center. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you all this morning virtually. I'm excited about what God. 
God is doing in our lives. Um, I have the assignment this morning to preach the word of the Lord, but before I do anything, I just want to open up in prayer, and I want you to pray with me. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this moment in time. I thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you that you're the righteous judge, you're, you're Alpha, you're Omega. I thank you for who you have created us to be in the earth. Now, God, I would ask right now for your anointing to come into the midst of this room. I would ask, Father God, that you would come in this place like a rushing mighty wind. God, I ask even now, Father God, that the breath of God, the wind of God, will begin to blow into this house. I thank you for the Ruach even now, Father God. I thank you that you're blowing your wind, Father God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I thank you, Father God, for this word that you're getting ready to speak through me. I thank you right now for this prophetic season, this prophetic hour that we are in. Father God, I ask that you open up the ears of your people to hear, Father God, what thus saith the Lord you are going to speak speak through me this morning. I thank you, Father God, that you chose me for such a time as this to speak the oracles of heaven. I thank you for this prophetic assignment. God, I thank you for the hour that we are in. Now, Father, I pray even now, Father God, that every enemy, every demonic force, every demon that would try to bring fear and anxiety upon even now this word, God, I come against it in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you are the lifter of our head and we call you Jesus. I thank you. You are the righteous judge. I thank you that you are Alpha and Omega. I thank you you and that you are the first and the last i thank you that jehovah gabor i thank you that you're the god that fights for us now god i ask you even now in the midst of this word that you use me like never before decrease me so you may be increased father i thank you for this assignment that is at hand in jesus name i pray amen and amen i'm so honored and excited to bring the word of the lord before you this morning I want to first give honor to our leaders, Bishop Gregory Andre Dennis and Pastor Tanya. We are praying for you and the entire Dennis and McClure family. I want all of you just to share this message, share on Facebook, share on YouTube, invite your friends, even start a watch party. Um, this morning, I I'm, I'm, was given this assignment to bring forth the word of the Lord and uh, I have a couple scriptures before I get exactly into the word, but I want to just lay a quick foundation really quick. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to Matthew 24 uh, verses 4 through 14. I want to use the message Bible, if that's all right. It says, Jesus said, watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming I am Christ the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumors of wars, keep your head, don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nations will fight nation, ruler fighting ruler. Over and over, famine and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. They are going to throw you to the wolves and kill you. Everyone hating you because you carry my name. And then going from bad to worse, it will be like dog eat dog. Everyone at each other's throat. Everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many of us, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing left of their love, but a mound of ashes. Stay with it. That's what God is requiring. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry. And you'll be saved. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. Witness staked out in every country. And the end will come. Another scripture that the Lord led me to was 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. We run through this scripture really quick, but I had to realize something that I wanted to read it a little slow today. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, and then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. I want to bring to your attention that we are in a really strange and peculiar season. We are facing two types of pandemics in this hour. We're dealing with the COVID-19 virus, a.k.a. coronavirus, and we have the pandemic of police brutality and racial injustices. Out of the 33 years of my life, I never thought I would see the manifestation of these two scriptures come to life. We are now in the hour 
where we need people to come forth. This morning, the Lord led me to the scripture of Romans 8, 18 verses 22 as my point of contact as scripture. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subject the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. What this scripture is saying that the earth is crying out. The earth is pregnant with purpose. The earth is pregnant with assignments. The earth is crying out for the manifestations of the sons of God. What is going on now is that the earth is waiting for the emergence. I'm sure you'll ask first, what does emergence even mean, Corey? The emergence is the process of coming into view or becoming exposed after being concealed or hidden. This morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, the hour of emergence is now. Uh, once again, the emergence means the process of coming into view or becoming exposed after being concealed or hidden. A prophetic illustration that the Lord dropped in my spirit was like when you go to the Preakness and you see a horse and a horse is behind the gate. And many times we wonder what happens when the horse comes out. We oftentimes see the horse run out bucking. And that's what is happening in this season. God is using us that have been locked in and boxed in and caved in to come out of the gate running. It is the responsibility of prophetic people to pray and ask God for clarity and instruction for the hour that we are in. Months ago, I can recall the Lord woke me up out of my sleep, a deep good sleep. And I began to come out of the sleep and I was weighted down and burdened as to what was going on in the world today. I felt the burden to get up and pray. After I prayed, I grabbed my notepad and I wrote some points down and the Lord told me this. He said, Corey, we have always been a people of prayer, but now I'm moving you to a place of action. The Lord says that we must now move from prayer to a place of mobilization. It is an action where God will reveal mysteries, strategies, and give us the green light to go ahead and execute. There are many of you listening to me that are under the sound of my voice that are ready for the, to answer the clarion call. I'm sure you asked that question, what is the clarion call? The clarion call is accepting the mantle and the assignment that is on your life. Some of us have been called to five-fold ministry. We've been called to the apostolic. We've been called to the prophetic. We've been called to the evangelistic work. We've been called to the pastoral ministry. We've been called even to the teacher. And then there's some of us who've been called to the seven mountains. Ah, the mountain of religion, the mountain of government, the mountain of family, the mountain of education, the mountain of arts and media, ah, the mountain of business. I don't care what you're called to, but the Lord wants you to get up in this hour, in this season and do something. We must understand that there is an uprising, there's an uproaring, and there's an upheaval that is taking place. Isn't it amazing that we serve a God that would allow all of this calamity to happen in the world? I believe that the Father was trying to get our attention. We've been silent too long. We've been passive too long. The Lord is saying in this hour, my sons and my daughters, it's time to get up. Speak loud and spare not. There are several points that the Lord laid on my heart to share with you this morning before I get out of your way. The first point that I want to talk to you about is the new normal. Uh, the new normal. We've heard that term uh, quite a bit over the past four months. We've heard the man 46 minus one 
say the new norm. We've heard researchers and uh, um, um, scientists talk about the new norm. We talked about the new norm being don't touch somebody, uh, don't uh, grab or hug or kiss, uh, practice social distancing, make sure you're six feet apart. I even want you to hashtag and put the new me. I, I really don't think the Lord is using the new norm in this hour. I think he's using the new me. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, behold uh, um, all the new things that he's doing in you. I want you to put in the comments section, hashtag new me. God wants to use you to do things differently in this hour. Uh, the second point that's coming to my mind is God wants to use three groups of people in this hour. The first group of people that he's going to use are called reformers. These are believers. They're sons of God who make a change to something that needs to improve. They don't conform to old models and old systems, but they know how to work within the system. The second group of people that God is using in this hour is called architects. Uh, it is a person who builds designs and they are called to build things based off of how the old thing looked. Uh, so don't be discouraged, church of God, when the architects come. They're building upon the foundation and not so much that they're building something new. Uh, then the last group of people that God is raising up in this hour is called the revivalists. Uh, this is one who revives and restores something that has been disused. Uh, the revivalists are coming to cause a reset, a reshaping, a renewing, a rebranding, and a recalibration. The third point that comes to my mind or my spirit is there is a radical revival about to break out. You ask, what is a radical revival? I can't say radical revival without saying first there is a radical riot that's going to break out. The definition of riot is a violent disturbance to the peace caused by a crowd, an impressively large display or noise to a community. I, I must first uh, bring attention to 2019. Our very own Darian Dennis had the opportunity of producing and bringing out an album called Revival. One of the illustrations that caught my eye was on the album cover, we saw in big red letters, Revival. But we also saw a picture of riots breaking out. I don't believe that anything that happens in the natural won't manifest in the spirit. The word says that all things happen natural before it happens in the spirit. So I believe that God is getting ready to bring a radical revival to the church. I want the church and the kingdom to understand that this radical revival, this radical riot doesn't look like the church of yesterday. Uh, they may not wear your collars and crosses. They may not know all about your Eucharistic sacraments. They may not know about all of your garments, but they know that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. They know he's Alpha and he's Omega. They know he's the first and the last. They know how to lay hands on the sick and they recover. They they know how to shift atmospheres. Ah, uh, in the fourth point, the Lord is laying on me. Be aware of these two spirits that are coming to attack the emerging generation. One spirit is the spirit of Python. Python is a constrictor, which means they come to squeeze the life out of their prey before they devour it. Saints of God, emerging leaders, the enemy is coming to take the life out of you. We have to understand that we move and live and have our being in him. And inside of us is the breath of God. And the enemy just not, just, does not just want your life, but he wants the breath of God that is inside of you. The last point that comes to my mind is he's getting ready to release upon the emerging generation the spirit of Delilah. Delilah is a spirit that comes to distract you from fulfilling your purpose and your destiny. In the book of Judges 16, 15 through 21, then Delilah pouted, how can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You've made fun of me three times and you still haven't told me what makes you strong. She tormented him with a nagging voice day after day. He was sickened to death. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut. He confessed for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head was shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become weak as anyone else. Then Delilah realized that he had finally told the truth. So she sent the Philistine rulers to come back one more time. 
She said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine ruler returned with money in their hand. Delilah lured Samson to sleep with his head in her lap. Saints, don't put your head in the wrong lap. And then she called in a man to shave off seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do what I did before, shake myself free. Here we see Samson is being very arrogant, but he didn't realize that the Lord had left him. So the Philistine captured him and gouged out his eye. They took him to God's where he was bound with brown, bronze chains and forced to grind, get grain in the prison. I want you to understand emerging leaders, emerging church that is uprising. This is so, so much of an interesting story. Delilah knew in order for her to get to Samson, she had to take Samson's strength. So she took where his strength lied in his hair. Emerging church, the Lord said in his word that I call my young because they're strong. In this season, this spirit is coming to take out your strength. Because the enemy says if I could take out your strength, I could cause you to lose your vision. If you lose your vision, you can lose your destiny and your assignment. And I want to let you know that the enemy's coming not only for your vision, but he's coming for your strength. So I want to encourage you to watch and guard what is assigned to your life. I want to close now with a prophetic word that the Lord released of me to the church, not Kingdom Worship Center, but the church at large. He says, I am God that healeth thee. I am the sovereign one. I am your Lord. I am that I am. I say unto you, my church, it is now time to put things in its proper perspective. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. I am raising up a new and glorious church. Do not think that I did not allow this to happen. Nothing catches me by surprise. I am raising up leaders from all around the world. Most of these people you have never heard of before. For this is the hour of the no names. Do not reject my prophets. Do not reject my voice. This is the hour the earth shall hear my voice again. Systems and traditions of man are going to begin to fail you. Uh, we are about to see the greatest movement of the apostolic and the prophetic in the church. I'm going to demonstrate my power in the church. Healing will take place. Eyes will be open. Deliverance will break out. Yokes will be destroyed. The oppressed will be made whole. We are now moving from a place of the anointing into the glory realm. You will see your sons and daughters prophesy. These are people who cannot be brought. They will not be seduced by Jezebel. My church is arising with the voice of reason. Uh, many of you will run to the church for answers. Uh, pastors and leaders, be encouraged. Some members will never return back to the church. What I am doing in this season is separating the wheat from the tear. Seasoned saints be encouraged. You hear terms like emerging and new church arising and you've gotten frustrated as if you don't fit a part of this remnant. But I've called you because you know the way. I called you because you're wise beyond your years. Church of the living God, revival is coming to the land. Revival is coming to the land. Revival is coming to the land. And heaven will hear this sound. Be open to who I am using in this hour. Something is moving, something is changing. Feel his glory. It feels like heaven on earth. And my word to Kingdom Worship Center at large, the prophetic demonstration that is getting ready to happen, it will not all just come from the intercessors or the prayer warriors or the prophets of the house. It will come from the music ministry. It will come from the praise and worship team. Praise and worship team, be encouraged that the songs you begin to sing on Sunday morning may not all be on the radio. They may be the song of the Lord that he drops in your spirit as you're up here. I want to encourage the Levites that are going to play under the anointing of God, under the oracles of God. Uh, you're going to make preaching and teaching easy for Bishop Greg. That some Sundays he won't even have to preach because you've already ministered the word of God through the instruments. I pray that you align yourself with what God is doing, Levites. I pray, Terry, you're open. I pray that Curlin is open and Brock and Uncle Leon and, and Darian and Sean and Randy and, I, and Dr. Loretta. And I even pray now for Brian Wheatley. I pray a special prayer upon him because this is the hour that he is a part of this emerging group of people. There is a sound in his mouth that many 
many shall hear. Sons and daughters will come to the house of God to hear the ministry that's inside of him. This is a season of unlocking. I feel a mantle from heaven even falling on him now because there are some that will never be reached from other people. So he has the answer in his mouth. Be encouraged, man of God. I want to pray now for all of us that are listening. Father, I thank you for these your sons and daughters. I thank you, God, for this assignment that you've given me. God, I allow their ears to be opened up to what you're saying in this hour. I thank you for the kabod, the weight of ministry that sits even on this house. Thank you for our leaders. I pray a special prayer for Bishop Greg. I thank you for the apostolic oil that is on his life, the apostleship. I thank you for his wife and his children. God, I thank you for our coverings, Bishop Ralph and Lady D. Now, Father, use this house to turn the corner of this region. Pick us up in the spirit realm, God. I thank you that Kingdom Worship Center is a pillar to this city that is a pillar to the nation. I thank you that the North Gate, the South Gate, the East Gate, and the West Gate are hearing our voice. I thank you that every ministry under this house is aligned in itself with purpose and vision. I decree and declare that every devil in hell has already been silenced because of who we are. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your anointing. Spirit of the living God, do a demonstration in this house. Stir up the anointing. Awaken mantles. Awaken anointings. Dead come out of dead places now. Now is the hour to come forth. Intercessors get back on post. Prayer warriors pray. Teachers teach. Evangelists lead them to Christ. Teachers teach. Pastors shepherd. Apostles instruct. Prophets prophesy. I thank you now for this hour. For the hour has come to emerge with a sound. The hour has come to emerge with a sound. And we thank you Father for who you are. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to first, lastly, open up the altar for those of you that may be watching and you don't know who Jesus Christ is. I need you to know that he died for the remission of your sins. There's nothing you've done or could have ever done that could pluck you out of the hand of Jesus. And it's just an easy, simple prayer. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died for any sin that I've committed and you rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and I invite you in my heart to be my Father and my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm sure there's something at the bottom of the screen that will let you know how to get in contact with us at Kingdom Worship Center. If you need prayer or you need discipleship on how to uh, know him even more, we're free here at the church to, to answer any phone calls or emails. Uh, somebody will be praying for you and we love you and hope to see you soon. The last thing I need to do is invite you all to give. Uh, this is a great ministry. It's a church that's uh, uh, doing good. It's getting better all the time. And I love this ministry. We have vision. We have mission. We give to the homeless. We give to those that are less fortunate, that may need things. Uh, but so I, I want to read Luke 6 and 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall make given to your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met, with all it shall be measured to you and again. So I just want to let you know there's several ways to give at the bottom of the screen. Please join us in building the kingdom and here at Kingdom Worship Center. Once again, this is good ground. We're so open. Don't miss this opportunity. We are under open heaven and there's streams open up even in your life. And when you sow into good ground, you're going to reap a mighty harvest. So I'm grateful for who you are and what you're doing in the work of ministry. Kingdom Worship Center, I love you guys. Pray my strength in the Lord. I'm praying for you. Continue to pray for our leaders. Pray for our senior leaders. Let's pray for each other to check on one another see how we doing uh we know we miss each other and i hope we all get together soon and amen love you guys Hello, my name is Olivia Mitchell, and I am a graduate from City Neighbors High School. This fall, I plan to attend Calvary University and major in business administration. I want to thank my family and my friends for their support, and I want to thank you, the Western Center, for the opportunity. I also want to send a special thank you to Elder Lenore Taylor for helping me every step of the way. I am blessed to have been given this opportunity, and I am excited to start my journey as a college student.
Hopkins. I want to extend a thank you to my family, Kingdom Worship Center, and Elder Lenore Taylor for helping me. I, most importantly, I want to extend a thank you to God for giving me this opportunity. Hi, I'm Deborah Dennis from Kingdom Worship Center, and you can see that I'm holding in my hand a purple pouch with KWC on the front of it. Within this purple pouch is some anointing oil that has been set aside specifically for the members of Kingdom Worship Center. If you are interested in having this with you so that you can lay hands on the sick so they'll be, be covered and so that you can use it for yourself, please email us at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Our weekly Bible study small groups have been amazing, but one thing we're missing is you. If you haven't joined a small group yet, there's still time. All you have to do is send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and request more information. Are you a young adult between the ages of 21 and 40? If so, send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org with your contact information to receive news on all of the upcoming youth adult events. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media outlets. We can be found on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. Please follow us on our Facebook page at Kingdom Worship Center. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Calling all essential worshipers for our KWC outdoor service. This service will be held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays at 8.30 a.m. 9160 Red Branch Road in Columbia, Maryland. Make sure you bring your lawn chair, your mask, and your heart to worship. Please join us every first Sunday on Bishop Greg's Facebook page for our live communion. Our online communion will convene immediately after our Sunday worship at kwc.online.church. Join Pastor Tanya and the Women's Ministry Council for a virtual beach party on Saturday, August 1st at 2 p.m. Please RSVP by July 26 by sending an email to womenscouncil at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that the word that you have heard will leave a tremendous impact in your life as you go on to discover and embrace the new you. Don't forget to join us next week here at 10 a.m. as well at kwc.online.church or on our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Have a blessed week.